Monday, December 9th, 2019, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. This morning, I want to give out a warning. Uh, I just saw a story in the FT, Goldman Sachs or Goldman plans to bring wealth management to the masses. Investment bank to launch robo advisor for clients with as little as $5,000 to invest. Uh, why am I warning <laughs> against this? Am I anti uh, Goldman Sachs? No, I just look at the facts. I look at the people who work there. I look at the history of Goldman Sachs. Uh, Goldman Sachs has usually followed the Rothschild uh, strategy. What's the Rothschild strategy? Well, they deal with countries, big corporations, um, very high net worth individuals, right? Because there's more money uh, in that. And uh, so what proof have I got that uh, one needs to be uh, aware that Goldman Sachs is a monetary predator? Or as Matt Taibbi uh, said in his great article back in 2010 uh, entitled The Great American Bubble Machine, uh, Matt Taibbi of Rolling Stone called Goldman Sachs the vampire squid right? Uh, this is what he says. From tech stocks to high uh, gas prices, Goldman Sachs has engineered every major market manipulation since the Great Depression, and they're about to do it again, right? Uh, you need to watch also um, The Big Short, a uh, great movie about the 08 crisis. Goldman Sachs is involved in that. You'll see how uh, they act towards their clients. Uh, I recommend you read the uh, Rolling Stone uh, article. Uh, I won't go through the whole thing. The other point I would make is that Nomi Prince, many of you uh, might know Nomi Prince. She used to work for Goldman Sachs. She's written various books, like All the President's Bankers, The Hidden Alliance that Drive American pa Alliances that Drive American Power. Nomi Prince. I've heard her many times. Uh, in interviews with other people on YouTube, uh, talk about when she moved to Goldman Sachs, um, how she was told that she, if she wanted to get ahead, she had to look after her superiors and not her clients, right? So that's how Goldman Sachs thinks. Uh, do leopards change their spots? Uh, rarely or never, right? So let's uh, see what they're really thinking of doing here Goldman Sachs. Let's go through the article. So this has come out, came out yesterday in New York. It says Goldman Sachs will offer digital wealth management services to individuals with as little as $5,000 from next year, bringing the Wall Street Investment Bank a step closer to Main Street under the watch of new chief executive David Solomon. Well, one thing I would say, uh, they, uh, that's how much they respect the general public. They won't probably even have someone there physically speaking to you. It will be a robot. You'll be pressing, you know, phoning the, uh, uh, the number, saying press one if you want to do this. You know, you know the, the deal, right? Or you do it online, and uh, if their system uh, goes down, you won't be able to touch things or do anything. I think it will be a nightmare. Personally, um, you can try it. Uh, and the reason I'm talking about this happened in the past is now history. And many people don't know about these things. Uh, people my age have been in the markets for many years uh, and know about what happens uh, in the markets and on Wall Street and with institutions like Goldman Sachs. The other thing I would say about Goldman Sachs is that they're heavily connected uh, with government. They even went after uh, sovereign countries. As you can see by the story here from 2015, Greek debt crisis, Goldman Sachs could be sued for helping hide debt when it joined uh, Euro. Exclusive, a leading advisor to debt-driven countries has offered to help Athens recover some of vast profits made by the investment bank. So they drove uh, Greece almost into bankruptcy. I'm not blaming Goldman Sachs completely for that, but 
they helped gold, uh, Greece hide their debts. And who was uh, in that department working for Goldman Sachs? Um, in the past, well, it's been Mario Draghi, uh, who, who was president of the ECB until, until recently. It's been Mark Carney, who's now president of the uh, or governor of the Bank of England. He worked for Goldman Sachs. So these are the kind of people that work for Goldman Sachs. Uh, they, they become central bankers. They've helped uh, countries, uh, how can I say, uh, cook their books. And it eventually led to, to countries going almost bankrupt, right? Uh, the people now in Greece are suffering. So this is Goldman Sachs. So let's continue in the article here. It says... Uh, Joe Duran, a founder of the United Capital Wealth Management firm that Goldman bought for $750 million in May, told the FT that his team was on track to launch a robo-advisor in 2020. He said the service would allow Goldman to create a solution. <laughs> I don't like that word, a solution for clients with as little as $5,000, $10,000 or $15,000 to invest United Capital has not finalized the minimum investment beyond that it will be significant, significantly lower than its traditional accounts, serving people with 1 to 10 million of investable wealth. It's a pipeline for future clients. Well, pipeline for future suckers, I would say. <laughs> uh, pipeline for more uh, uh, vampirism, right? <laughs> For sucking that sucking sound of wealth. So beware. Uh, deal with Goldman Sachs if you want. Uh, but uh, do your due diligence. Look at their uh, history, what they've done in the past. And there's a lot out there that you can look at. Of course, uh, the FT is never going to talk about uh, the Matt Taibbi article. They're just trying to help Goldman Sachs. It's almost like it's a, a paid article right to to push the business uh of course ft probably they get paid by goldman sachs to put you know well, goldman sachs probably advertises with them so they're not gonna go against goldman sachs they're just gonna push it as a, a great thing right the other thing i would say is that uh, it looks like goldman sachs and the big wall street banks uh they've kind of reached the limit of how much wealth they can extract from their bigger clients from governments uh that now they're going after the small people right and believe me uh there's not much wealth left even there as you can see here from this uh, uh federal reserve uh data of uh of wealth distribution what's amazing about this is that goldman sachs is now going after uh a group of people that really don't have that much wealth compared to the uh, very top, to the to the top uh, nine percent uh, or ten percent, as you can see here from this Fed data since 1989, how the top nine percent uh, their wealth has uh, ballooned, while uh, the the light uh, yellow uh, color here and the red that's the bottom 90 percent of americans they're they're going for th these people <laughs> they must be really desperate because if they can't go after the people at the top so the fact that goldman sachs is going for this uh very uh small amount of wealth uh just goes to show uh that uh, maybe the people at the top um they've twigged on to what goldman sachs is really all about right so just wanted to put that out there of course there's uh, uh, other uh, headlines this morning um an interesting one that i spoke about yesterday in my live stream is how the bis the bank for international settlements in basel came out yesterday with a report of how it was the hedge fund community that triggered the repo um crisis in in september this year uh, Zero Hedge, their story covering this, they covered this after I did my um, live stream. They're saying that it was uh, several LTCMs all at once. Uh, I read the article from the FT uh, about the BIS. 
I'm not really sure if it was several LTCMs. If some of you remember LTCM in 1998, uh, the Fed had to bail them out, had to ask the Wall Street banks to put up $14 billion to bail them out. But uh, one thing the BIS said is that uh, the repo market is not out of the woods, that uh, volatility in the markets could trigger more crisis in the repo market. So that's the other thing out there. So now let's look at where the markets are this morning. It's quarter to 8 a.m. London. So we've got spot gold up slightly, up uh, just over $2 at $1,462.20. Range has been $1,458 to $1,462.80. So right near the highs. Uh, silver is up slightly, uh, outperforming very slightly gold. It's up $0.05 cents at $1,661. Uh, the Dow is down one point, so very quiet right now, 28005 S&P is down one point, NASDAQ 100 future down three. So not much activity there. Uh, the pound has continued to uh, rally into the election on Thursday, the general election. It's now at 131.70. Someone asked me, why is the pound such a strong currency? Is the strongest currency in the world? Well, this I've said many times, the pound is just as bad as all the other fiat currencies. Debt-based currency, uh, the debt's not going to decrease. The debt's only going to go higher. These are just uh, fluctuations we see in fiat currencies against each other. In the long term, they're all sinking versus uh, the real money, gold, right? Uh, which has been money for three and a half thousand years. Uh, and gold, which has been hoarded for more than three and a half thousand years, right? And has the most stable value of any any commodity or any money, of course. Uh, Euro, uh, Euro is 110.64, unchanged. Dollar is down slightly against the yen, 108.56. Dollar, dollar is a little stronger against the U1, uh, 703.30 up an eighth of a percent. But as you can see, uh, the markets are fairly quiet early on uh, this morning in London. Uh, crude oil uh, off the highs. Uh, it's down half a percent overnight, but still fairly strong. It's at almost $59 WTI, 58.85. Uh, Brent crude uh, down half a percent as well, 63.82. The 10-year yield is down about two basis points at 182. So in spite of the fact that uh, we had really good data, right? Uh, jobs data on Friday and the stock market almost rallied back to all time highs. We were seeing uh, the bond market not really buy into this. We do have a Fed meeting starting um, tomorrow, ending on Wednesday. Don't expect the Fed to cut rates this time. So there you go. Uh, do your due diligence. Uh, do your homework about uh, financial institutions that you're going to deal with, uh, especially those that have uh, the track record of uh, uh, an investment bank like Goldman Sachs, right? Um, don't be lured into dealing with them just because they uh, it's Goldman Sachs, right? Um, so if you enjoyed this video, Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Please share this video far and wide as well. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Steemit, and on DTube. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.